Good morning and welcome to St. Martin's in the Field Episcopal Church here in Severna Park, Maryland on this wonderful second Sunday of Advent. We are so glad that you are here with us for worship this morning. Everything you need will be in either this service leaflet or in the Red Book of Common Prayer or Blue Hymnal. We have a number of supports for children in church, including the activity bags, and we have our children's chapel time. When the gospel book and the cross come out to the center, that is the kids' cue to go to the back for a wonderful time of Children's Chapel. Again, it's wonderful to see you all here this morning. May Christ be present with us as we worship him in spirit and in truth. Our opening hymn is hymn number 76 on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. <laughs>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Please join me in praying Psalm 72, found on page 5 of the bulletin. 
Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has come, become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea 
were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they, bapt- and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember my first day of high school, and I remember the usual things, you know, trying to find my way around, um, which friends were in which class, who was at which lunch, who's sitting at what table, all that kind of stuff, meeting your new teachers. But what I especially remember about that first day was my first day of phys ed, my first day of gym class. And we go out, and it's a beautiful day. The sun's shining. They say, okay, you're supposed to go outside. We're sitting on the hill. We're waiting. What are we going to do? Some flag football, maybe some dodgeball. This is going to be great. Sound the grass. And the coach walks up. Walks up to us. He's got that, you know, black, short-cut hair, almost a buzz. He's, He's wearing his shades complete with the whistle around his neck, clipboard in his hand, he's ready to go. And then out of nowhere, he just starts yelling at us. He just starts yelling at us. He's saying things like, if you don't like that you have to take P.E., don't come whining to me, you take it up with the governor. It's the state of Pennsylvania law. We hadn't even done anything yet. There hadn't been any locker room pranks. There, we didn't bully anybody. There were no on-the-field shenanigans or hijinks. Yet he just keeps going. And God help you if you misbehave for a substitute. You will run hills, I kid you not, for the rest of the semester. Coach meant business. Coach meant business. You know who else meant business? John the Baptist. He's not messing around either. An eager crowd, along with some Pharisees and Sadducees, they come out to hear John preach They come out to get baptized, and seemingly out of nowhere, he just starts yelling at them. You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now imagine what that must have been like. I mean, can you imagine a nice young couple coming to Matthew's office with their baby? And they say, oh, we'd really like to have the baby baptized. And then Matthew just shouts out, you brood of vipers! Who warned you to come here? I mean, they, well, that's how we do it. Right? They'd be shocked. They'd be shocked. And you can bet that John's crowds were shocked. I bet the Pharisees and Sadducees that they were shocked too. What John's doing is he's unloading on them in the prophetic tradition. You see, John is a prophet. 
He is speaking God's message. That's what a prophet does. And he's telling everyone to be those trees that bear fruit. It's time to shape up. Your hearts, your lives must match those religious acts. No more going through the motions. Going through the motions or just being a child of Abraham or just getting dunked in the Jordan, though that's important. That on its own will not save you. It's time to reshape your hearts. It's time to repent. Then John continues to take a direct tone, right? Trees that don't bear fruit will be burned. When Jesus comes, he'll make sure the chaff burns in the fire. Again, John means business. This is why John... Now, here, here's why John uses this intense language with winnowing forks and wheat and chaff and fire. It's designed to get the people's attention. Mission accomplished, right? He's got to get their attention. John is making sure that God's message gets out. He's making sure the message gets out, and, and part of that message is this, and it's that there is a cost, and it is dear to rejecting the rule of God and then choosing something else. There is a cost, and it is dear to rejecting the rule of God and then choosing something else. What John says is instead, come, repent, repent and be baptized. And you know, it turns out, you know, baptism. Baptism is a part of this too. And you know, the baptism services, they evolved over time. You know, it's an interesting fact that there was a time in the Middle Ages when it was very common as part of the baptism service to put salt, to actually put salt on, on the baby's tongue. And then in the ancient church, you know, where adult baptism was more the norm, in some places the candidates would be asked to face west. I don't think this is west, but we're going to do this anyway. The <laughs> candidates were asked to face west when they were doing the renunciations and the renunciations of Satan and evil and sin. They were to face this way. But then when it was time to do the affirmations, yes, they turn. They make the turn. And by this action, the candidates symbolized a full and complete turn in their lives, a turn away from sin and evil, and then a turn to new life, a new life in Christ. So you see, when John the Baptist proclaims, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, he's asking the people to turn away from an old life of disobeying God and turn to a new life. In fact, the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew word for repentance, the word is shuv, and that actually sort of literally means to turn or to return. So for John the Baptist, true and full repentance means turning to a new life centered on God. Not just lip service, but a complete lifestyle change that bears fruit. And so he's real clear. The Messiah is coming. The kingdom of heaven is near, so repent. Turn with your whole life in word and faith and action to God. Don't wait. Repent now. There is no time to waste. So at this point now, some of you may be thinking, wait, this is most of what Advent is? I didn't come to church during this holiday season to feel bad about myself. Who needs all this repentance talk? Let's just skip the sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> but don't forget. Don't forget the main point of repentance isn't to feel bad about yourself, although sometimes that's necessary, but it's not the main point. And the point of repentance isn't to try and make sure you stay off Jesus' naughty list. Jesus is not making a list of who's naughty or nice and checking it twice. No, instead, Jesus is reaching out to you. He is calling you. He's calling you to turn away from any sin or evil in your life and then turn to him. Now, what might that repentance be? What might turning to Christ look like? Well, try this. Imagine a man on his way to work. He's an ambitious man. He's been climbing the corporate ladder. He's going up the ranks. Say so his name is Colin. And this morning, Colin is super stressed. There's so much to do. Superiors to keep happy, accounts to land, employees to manage. And 
Colin just, he races to the coffee shop. He needs that cup of coffee in the morning, and he walks into that coffee shop, and he's in his nice press suit. He's clean shaven, hair combed, you know, better than mine. And he's all ready for his meeting, but he's just got to have that cup of coffee in the morning. And he's got to have it now. But then when he enters the shop, it turns out that there are, in fact, others in the community who would like a hot drink this morning. <laughs> the line is long, or at, least, or at least it seems long. Couldn't they work faster? Isn't there a more efficient way to do this? You know, they should have more people on for the morning rush. Colin's pulse is racing. He's got to have his coffee. Time's ticking away. Blood starts to boil a little bit because there is a mom in front of him who's trying to order and work with her kid at the same time. And then it's like, what? She's ordering for an entire mother's group? How many mothers are there in this group? And then when it's her turn, he starts barking at the barista. What's going on? Why is this taking too long? Well, a nervous barista, she just wants to get Colin out of there and move on to some more pleasant customers, so she works fast. That means stirring and pouring. And in her haste, she forgets to put the lid on tightly on the cup. And then it happens. Bam! The coffee spills all over Colin and that nice suit. And then he explodes Amid the apologies of a flustered and embarrassed server, a steady stream of obscenities flows from Colin's mouth at the top of his lungs. But after the incident, Colin gets into his car. Tears start to well up in his eyes, just a little bit. What's he going to do? He knows things have gone too far. He sits in that seat, hovers over that steering wheel. He pulls his hands together. He says a quiet prayer, and then he gathers his composure, walks back into that coffee shop, apologizes, and leaves a spectacular tip. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. He knows he needs to make some serious changes in life. Starts exercising, taking up some stress management techniques. Works to make time for his family and his faith. Now each morning, Instead of starting with mulling over the day's agenda or presentation notes, he starts first with a short moment of prayer. And during the week now, he's made it a practice every day when he goes in to try to smile and say hello to those who he meets through the day. On Sunday morning, Colin's laptop, which in the past normally was alight with feverish activity and cleaves clacking, is now closed. It's silent as he sits in church together with his family. Sure, life is busy. Occasionally there's a business trip on weekends. It happens. But when it is at all possible on Sunday, Colin's not working anymore to get that little extra edge. Instead, he's got his hands out, cupped at the altar rail, ready to receive Christ coming to him in the body and blood of the bread and wine at communion. See, the repentance that John the Baptist speaks of at the Jordan River, that means turning one's entire life around. Turning one's entire life around to Christ. It's a lifestyle change. It's a way of being. It's preparing the way of Christ to form you more and more into the person that you're called to be. Into the person that God created you to be. It's allowing ourselves to be transformed so that we might become agents of Christ's peace and love in the world. We become people who prepare this world for the coming of God's kingdom and for that new creation that comes with Christ's return. So where do you need to repent? How will you turn your life more fully to Christ this Advent? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Amen. Amen.
standing as we are able, let's profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 1, found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer this week, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew's, Pasadena, St. Philip's, Annapolis, and St. Martin's in the Field, Severna Park. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene and Robert, our bishops, for Matthew, Nathan, and John, our clergy, Lisa, our seminarian, and for all bishops and other ministers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, the Congress and Supreme Court of the United States. For Larry, our governor, Stuart, our county executive, and for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our St. Martin's in the Field Episcopal School and Tony, our head of school, this Severna Park for every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Cheryl, Aaron, Aaron, Ellen, Brody, Pierce, Laurie, Mary Ina, as well as those in our parish family in need of our continued long-term prayers as listed in our bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, especially Carolinda Owings and Lolly Bieri, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the blessings of this life, for all in our parish family who celebrate birthdays this week. Charlie, 
Janice, Taylor, Tony, Greg, and Stephen. In the communion of Blessed Martin and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. For a couple of quick announcements this morning, there's lots of pieces of paper in your bulletin, and they're all important. Um, first is uh, the pink sheet, which is our flower uh, and memorial dedication for Christmas. Um, if you would like to have uh, your loved ones, uh, either past or present, uh, memorialized and uh, give thanks for and to help us to celebrate the Christmas season with beautiful flowers, um, please fill out the pink sheet. You can put it in the offering envelope, um, or you can return it to the main office. Uh, or you can give it to one of the ushers, or you can do it online, too, if that's easier as well. Second is um, our, I'm so glad we're doing this, um, our outreach update, the monthly update. When you get a second, take this home and give a read through all the wonderful ways that our community is reaching out into the world, um, also reaching out to ourselves, in some cases, to spread the love and the light of Jesus in the world. Um, some really fantastic stuff, um, and I urge you to take a read through that. You'll also find that in your pews uh, and seat backs are yellow offering envelopes, which uh, is this is the first Sunday of the month, so um, we encourage you to give generously. Um, that will go to my discretionary fund, which we uh, I use uh, to do a couple of key things. When people come for assistance, financial assistance, um, both parishioners and those from the outside, um, monies are, are, are often given um, to help uh, with those. But also, um, I use that to uh, do some other wide work in the world for outreach that wasn't maybe covered in the outreach budget, and finally, um, to make sure that all the clergy's uh, discretionary funds have enough in them to meet the needs for those who come asking. So um, I urge you to be generous for that this Sunday. Let's see, in your green sheet, gosh, there's so much, this is the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? So many things happening. Um, one of the things that uh, is coming up on us faster than we might think, um, starting on su with Sunday, December 18th, the December holiday sharing, um, I went online to the Sign Up Genius. There are over 230 spots available for gifts that need to be purchased and things, items that need to be procured to help us support now, not 25, but 27 families, the largest number we've had uh, ever at St. Martin's to help support, plus the seniors that are there. Um, if you've not been there, uh, please take a look um, and sign up on the website in the Sign Up Genius so that we will have enough uh, gifts for all the families that we're supporting. So lots and lots and lots of openings there, um, and that's coming up on Sunday, December 18th um, at the nine o'clock hour in between the two services. We'll come together. Uh, bring the, all the gifts and things unwrapped. We will wrap them together, which is sometimes the most fun. Watching people try and wrap a basketball is always good fun. And we'll get together and have um, some good goodies and wrapping then. Taste of Advent's happening, Christmas flower dedication memorials, um, service times for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, because those happen on Sundays. Um, we will, uh, on Christmas Day, we'll have a 1030 service, one service at 1030. And on New Year's Day, we'll also have one one 1030 service as well. Um, so uh, <coughs> we'll see you here on Christmas Day and on, and on New Year's Day.
Um, finally, uh, the 2023 stewardship campaign update, we have about 103, well, not about, we have exactly 103 families that have given $635,096, um, which is a small increase of um, a half a percent over last year's giving. Um, we need to get to 850,000, so we have quite um, a delta in order to deliver all the things that we've done this year, again, for the coming year. So if you have given, thank you very, very much. Um, if you can give more, that would be obviously wonderful. And if you have not yet given, please don't wait another moment. Help your rector get some sleep um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and please go ahead and be generous as God has been generous with you. And my brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father <laughs> Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Martin and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have much faith and you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want to meet him should meet him here.
turn to page 8 of our worship bulletin. Chris, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to hope in the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this holy day and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.